Hi friends, I am Shravana and welcome back to my channel Sparkling Future. Before starting with today's topic, I request all of you to subscribe to my channel and also please like, share and hit the bell icon for the latest video notifications. Thank you. Friends, in yesterday's video, which is part 1 video, we have seen what is serialization and deserialization. So, we understand that serialization is nothing but the process of converting objects to the stream of bytes so that the transfer between the network can happen smoothly. And similarly, deserialization means the, the reverse of the serialization means once the object is reached the node in the form of bytes, we have to convert back to the object so that we can perform the transformations on top of it. That is called as serialization. Till here we have learned in previous video. So today we will see what are the other serialization techniques available and uh, how can we use it. That uh, theory that we will discuss in today's session. So we have like Apache Spark provides several serialization techniques. I mean it won't provide okay. There are some ser ser several serialization techniques and we can use in uh, while working with uh, Apache Spark. Okay. So uh, we have Java serialization. Cairo serialization, Avro serialization, protobuf serialization. There are actually many other, but these are some may, um, uh, like most of the people use it. So that's why I noted down these uh, serializations. So coming to the Java serialization, this is the default serialization mechanism in Java. While it's easy to use, it can be slower and uh, produce larger serialized data due to its extensive metadata. It might not be the most perfect, perf, uh, perfect choice for Spark applications. And also, uh, like while working with the Scala, right, uh, it's very similar to uh, Java. By default, it will take the Java serialization uh, when it is working with the serialization formats, like when working with RTDs and uh, data frames. Uh, when it is transferring the data over the network, it uses the Java serialization by default. And next one is the Cairo serialization. Cairo is a fast and efficient binary serialization framework. It's popular in Spark due to its speed and compactness. Cairo requires explicit class registration for optimal performance, uh, but it can significantly improve the serialization and deserialization speeds compared to the Java serialization. So we will see how to explicitly mention the Cairo serialization uh, uh, to enable this in Spark job. And next one is Avro serialization. Uh, this is Avro is a schema based uh, serialization framework. It's efficient in terms of space and uh, especially useful uh, when uh, dealing with evolving data schemas. Avro schema evaluation uh, capabilities make it a good choice uh, when data structures change over the time. Okay. And uh, next one is protobuf uh, serialization. So protocol buffer, the full form of that is protocol buffers is another schema based serialization format. It's designed for efficient serialization of structured data and can provide good performance and compactness. So I have noted down these four, right? So out of these, Cairo serialization is often a popular choice for, uh, uh, I mean, to use in Spark applications due to its speed and compactness. And it's uh, especially useful when dealing with the complex data structures and high, we need uh, some high performance and we have these high performance requirements that time we, we can choose this. So, however, we have these other serialization techniques like Avro, Protobuf also have their own strengths and might be suitable for certain scenarios uh, uh, where schema evolution is critical. But otherwise, we, if we don't uh, mention anything by default, it will take the Java serialization. If we wanted to have that uh, speed and compactness in any of the Spark jobs, then you can use the Cairo, you can enable the Cairo serialization. Okay. And uh, there are other serializations like pickle serialization and marshalling. So these terms are uh, vastly used in uh, the market. Okay. Whenever we are uh, talking about uh, the serializations, and working in PySpark mainly, right? When we are working with Python, we hear this term uh, often, okay? So just thought of explaining what is this as well. So this pickle serialization typically refers to the serialization mechanism provided by Python's built-in pickle module, okay? 
So, pickling is the process of converting Python objects into byte stream, which can then be saved as a file or transmitted over a network conversely. And then unpickling is the process of uh, reconstructing the original Python objects from the byte to stream. Whenever we do serialization, we have to do the deserialization, right? So, here pickling and uh, for converting that back to the object is called as unpickling. So, this pickle module in Python is used for both serialization and deserialization of Python objects. It is a convenient way to store complex data structures, objects and uh, even functions in a compact binary format. Pickle serialization can be useful for tasks like saving and loading the model states, caching immediate results or transforming the data between uh, uh, different python processes i mean we are transmitting the data between different python processes okay and uh, this is python specific okay uh, because that's where we have this pickle library and might not be compatible with other programming languages so uh, like uh, if it's json uh, we can use protocol buffers because that is for uh, see, uh, complex data types right uh, complex uh, data schemas so for python this uh, we use uh, i mean python centric uh, applications use uh, pickle serialization can be used and also uh, this version uh, there is a uh, this is very much version compatible we need to check okay like uh, this pickle module is version specific objects pickled in one version of python might not be unpickleable in different version if there have been changes to the object structure or picking uh, uh, pickling protocol so that is very carefully we need to verify the versions before using this one and next one is the marshalling so this is marshalling also known as a serialization or pickling in some context and it's the process of converting complex data structures or objects into a format that can be easily stored transmitted or reconstructed and uh, it also involves uh, transforming the data into linear representation um, often in the form of bytes or a string so that it can be saved to a file and sent over the network or even uh, we can store in a database as well. So this marshalling serves as a bridge between in-memory data structures and the external storage or communication mediums. So why we need this marshalling means uh, uh, it allows the data to be saved on disk or storage system so that it can be retrieved and reconstructed later. And uh, data can be marshaled before being transmitted between different processor or applications uh, allowing them to exchange the information. Also, uh, marshalling is commonly used to prepare data for transmission over a network allowing data to be sent from one machine to another. And uh, it used to make the data access between different programming languages. So, what is the main process of marshalling means? It involves converting data structures or objects into a format that retains the necessary information for reconstruction. So, this can be actual data values, metadata, sometimes even information about the data types. So, this is the overview of all the serialization this is just to give you some idea like what are serialization available and uh, what what is pickle serialization and uh, usually how python specific it is and what is marshalling because this term also we hear often but these things we don't use it right so that's why i'm not giving some sample code but whereas for the uh, like uh, cairo i'll just show you some sample so, uh, as I mentioned, right, we have these things and Java serialization, when to use, uh, when, when we talk about that. Uh, so, Java serialization is used to use, right, and uh, it's uh, suitable for simple serialization needs. So, it's a good choice when you are working within a Java only environment and uh, need to serialize and deserialize objects without complex configurations. And as I said, it is default in Java. So, any, any kind of, uh, when you are working with the JVM, underlying JVM processes, then if you don't specify any serialization, by default, Java serialization will be done. Okay. And when you are working with uh, uh, any performance critical scenarios, then you can go for Cairo serialization. And next one is this uh, pickle is used when you are uh, working um, uh, with Python and any simple convenient serialization you are looking for, then you can go for pickle serialization. Okay. So, when, when we take the default serialization mechanic, uh, mechanisms in Java, 
default is java serialization and in python it is pickle serialization and if any distributed computing frameworks like spark then you can use cairo okay so this is the sample code how can we enable the cairo serialization in any of the apache spark code so if you see here so i have taken scala code for the sample here so uh, we we create the spark conference so there usually we will set the settings for any configuration settings so we can use the set method for uh, mentioning the uh, any kind of settings right system test settings the configuration settings in the same way you can just use this spark dot serializer and class of cairo serializer dot get name and uh, we can actually registration if at all anything uh, optionally it's required so if you wanted the registration to be done you can set it to true otherwise you can set it to false as well and you can mention your class name here okay sorry you can mention the class name here which class you wanted to register and then with that configuration you create the spark context so this is how we use cairo serialization when I mean, we enable cairo serialization in scala code of the spark so as i mentioned right uh, when we are using the cairo we have to explicitly register the classes that we wanted to uh, have this cairo serialization enabled so that for that class alone the optimal performance will be we can expect this and uh, this is the configuration property for that okay dot set spark dot cairo dot classes to register and enter your entire class name and then create the spark context okay this is how we can enable the cairo serialization in spark code i mean scala code uh, when you are working with the spark like when you are going to create the spark context similarly even for spark session also you can just add this setting Hope this video is useful for you friends. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to my channel for more interesting learnings.